Good morning. I hope you're ready to worship God this morning. We came out to give him glory and honor. Come on, let me see your text in the chat box right now. Come on, let's begin to send up praises to our Father. Right now, we came to bless his holy name. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, yeah. Bless the Lord. With me, yeah, bless the Lord with me. I'm gonna say it again. Oh, bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless, bless the Lord with me. Everybody, come on and bless, bless the Lord with me. Yeah, bless the Lord with me. Everybody, help me say it. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Do your dance. 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 Do your d
your dance, to your dance, to your dance, to your dance, to your dance, wave your hands. Help me sing it, yes. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he deserves that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. It's a hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, one more time. Shift the atmosphere in your home right now so that God can position you for what he wants to do in you. Come on, get in a posture of worship so that he can pour all of his blessings out on you. Come on, come on, come on, worship him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a sweet spirit right now. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, even in the chat box. Come on, let us see some hearts. Let us see some comments of praise and worship going on right now. Come on. Come on, as we're streaming live. Come on, send some live comments right now. Yeah. Oh. Great and mighty God, we call you. Oh, great and mighty God we call you. Hey. Oh, great and mighty God we call you. Hey. Great and mighty God, great and mighty God, great and mighty God. Come on, worship Him. Great and mighty God, great and mighty God, great and mighty God, great and mighty God. Hey. Great and mighty God, great and mighty God. We're walking by faith right now. So we lean on you, mighty God, for the next steps of the direction that we need to go. We're leaning on you, God, to reveal to us the wisdoms and how we must proceed during this pandemic. We worship you right now because we know that the battle is already won. We know that. We will come out of this victorious. And so we send up a victorious praise. Even now. We send an advanced praise. For the advanced blessing that you're sending our way. You are positioning us for the good of the land. You're positioning us for the promises. Positioning us. For the land of milk and honey. 
So we send up a praise. Come on. Send up a praise right now. <laughs> send up a praise right now. Send up a praise right now. That's it, that's it, that's it, come on. Yeah. That's it, come on. Some of you need to break the glass ceiling over your head. Shabbat right now in your own home. Come on, right there where you're at. Somebody, you just need to scream right now. Don't think about it, just scream and release right now. Hey. Hey. There's a release for you. Hey. Come on, shift, shift, yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, hey, oh, hey, hey. That's it. Worship him. 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 That's it. Worship him. 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 That's it. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting strength right now in this moment. Worship him, worship him, hmm. worship him. You've been waiting for this moment here right now. Get everything that you need right now in this moment. Worship him, worship him. Yeah, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him. Worship Him. Yeah. Yeah. Such a sweet spirit. Ah, oh, yeah. Everybody help me say it. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord God Almighty. For the Lord God Almighty. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the 
come on right there. Stay right there in that moment of peace. I need you right now, wherever you're at right now, to begin to cuff your hand like this in your place where you're at right now. Cuff your hand so that you can receive what God wants to pour out on you. He wants to restore you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to build you up. He wants to position you for what he wants to do next. Come on, cuff your hand right there. Stay right there in this moment right there. Right there, stay right there. Cuff your hand. Take a deep breath and release the tensions that are on you right now. Take a deep breath and release the stress. <laughs> Take a deep breath and release anxiety. Come on. Take a deep breath and release fear. Come on, take a deep breath and release worry. Take a deep breath and release doubt. Come on, take a deep breath and release so that your storage may be empty so that he can allow your cup to run it over. Right there. That's it, right there. Somebody's emptying out right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, right now. That's it, that's it. Yes, I feel you releasing. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Real quick, I hear this to revive somebody real quick. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm the glory. Revive. This is specifically for somebody watching right now. This old song, Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. the glory revive us again
up your hands in adoration. He has revived you. He's given you strength. He's given you peace. Come on, stay right there in that zone right there. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, say that they had not that so close. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team, for that wonderful worship that we experienced this morning in the presence of the Lord. Well, good morning, Gavin Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will surely rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to grab your Bibles right now. Let's get ready to get into the Word of God. I want you to turn to the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And this morning, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Here begins the reading of God's Word. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. I'm going to read that verse again. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. This morning, I want to minister to you from the subject title, Standing Firm in the Fire. Standing Firm firm in the fire. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bless you this morning. We ask even now that the spirit of the living God will fall fresh right now, right in our homes, oh God, as we're watching, oh God, in various places, Lord God, even though we're not together in the physical building, we are together, oh God, through the spirit of God. We're together unified in the Holy Ghost, the bond of peace, and so this morning, God, I ask that you will speak, oh God, as the faces differ, so does the needs this morning, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, as you gave me this word, oh God, to share with your people, Lord God, that will leave encouraged, uplifted, and renewed, even in the midst of all that's happening today. So we bless you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, go ahead and type amen in the comment section. Amen. Standing firm in the fire, standing firm in the fire. You know, these are some trying times that you and I are going through. Even as I watch the news and, 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 and I see all the different things that are happening in our society, we're going through the midst of a pandemic. We, 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 we see social unrest in our nation. We, we see um, um, systemic racism. We see all different things that are happening in our media. We see job, um, the jobs are, 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 are going down because of the, the pandemic. We see people suffering. We see people dying. There's so many different things that can cause us to be become so discouraged in this hour. But I felt impressed by God this morning to encourage someone to stand strong, to stand firm. I want you to know that no matter what's happening around us, that God is still a very present help in the time of trouble. 
And I'm here to encourage someone this morning to, to, to stand firm. I don't care what you see around you. I don't care what you're personally going through. I want you to know that God is right there in the midst of it with you. And I think that uh, the most appropriate scripture that, that comes to mind as we will go into this message this morning is found in the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, we talk about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We used to play back in the day, say a bad Negro, but Abednego. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I believe that as we read through their story this morning, it will give us the strength and the courage that we need to know that God is with us as long as we stand firm in the midst of the fire. We have to understand that even, you know, today actually marks five months since the last time we met in our physical building. The last time we met was at the um, in, in mid March, Amen. And here we are now, mid to late March, and here we now are into our last Sunday of of, of August. By God's grace, going into the month of September. And God has been faithful to us he, to, to keep us, amen, to sustain us, amen, even the midst of some losses, even the midst of the pain, even the midst of this pandemic, he's been a keeping God. But we have to understand that even the midst of all that we're going through, a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. You have to understand that your faith in God is going to be tested. You have to understand that when you say, amen, just like if we, when, when I married my wife and I say, I love you, you love me, and we all have the emotion, but the love will be tested. And just as love is tested, your faith will be tested. But a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. So we need to write that right now. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. I have a question for you this morning. Where is your faith? Where is your faith this morning? Some of us, because of what we've seen and what we experienced, even going through this pandemic, we've been discouraged because, because of the things that we see on media, on television. Amen. The, the, the police brutality, the people losing jobs and caused a, such a spirit of despair and discouragement. And we could easily allow our faith to become shipwrecked. We could easily go from a place of believing God on the mountaintop to being in a place of depression in the valley. But I'm here to say this morning, I, God wants you to stand firm. Don't, don't, don't throw out your faith this morning. Don't shipwreck your faith this morning. Don't lose your faith this morning, but stand firm even in the midst of the fire. The Bible lets us know in the book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 4 to 6, Amen. We learn about King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was the Babylonian king at that time. He was the king of Babylon and he conquered Judah and he ordered the he ordered the capturing of the best and brightest of those from Judah. A part of, 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 of those individuals that were captured were these young men believed to be teenagers. Daniel, as we see the book of Daniel, amen, Daniel was captured, but also his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King Nebuchadnezzar makes a statue that's, if you read the scriptures, about 90 feet tall and nine feet wide because he was full of pride, or as we would say from the hood, he was full of himself. And he wanted every leader, every governor, every judge, every magistrate to come to this dedication of this huge statue that he made. And in Daniel chapter 3, verse 4 to 6 reads, heralds and shouts were being given because of this statue. And it was said in verse 5 that when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, or any other musical instruments, you must bow to the ground and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Verse 6 says, anyone who refuses to obey immediately will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Okay? Everyone is bowing to the this 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 graving, this graven image, this gold image. Now, you have to understand something. This is a Babylonian king. This is a Babylonian empire. The, 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 these young men from Judah were, 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 were captured, amen, and were taken to, to, to Babylon. They were the best and the brightest, and now everyone's bowing. But now the three Hebrew boys are still standing because the Bible lets us know that according to what we read in 
the Ten Commandments that there should be no other gods before him. And we're only to bow down to Yahweh, the true and living God. Remember, a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. Amen. So these three Hebrew boys were standing even in the midst of all that was going on. So this morning, I, I want to share with you and give you three qualities of standing in faith. Amen. You're going through some things. I'm facing some things. We all could go through a list. I could pass the camera around. We could all share our woes of what we're experiencing and what we're going through. But God wants us to stand firm in the midst of the fire. This is not time for you to give up. This is not time for a pity party. When you have a pity party, you stay in the pit. That's why it's called pit tea party. Pitiful. Get out of the pit. God wants you to stand firm this morning, even in the midst of all that's happening. So there are three qualities um, that we want to talk about standing in faith. Number one, faith obeys God instead of following man. You have a choice to make, believer, child of God. Am I going to follow God, obey God, or am I going to follow man? Am I going to listen to what man is saying, or am I going to obey what God is saying? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a choice they had to make. Are we going to bow down to this golden image and we know that it's wrong? Or are we going to obey God even though it might cause us to stand out, even though it might cause us to feel awkward, even though it might cause us to feel uncomfortable? And the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 16, everyone is bound. The three Hebrew boys are still standing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. In other words, I don't have to explain why I'm not bowing. They didn't have to defend themselves. And I love that they didn't have to defend themselves. Amen. Because you don't have to explain everything to everybody. Amen. There's some things that God has spoken to you. There's some uh, instructions that God has given to you. And you don't need to give everybody a commentary about what you feel, how you feel. And God, no, your job is to obey God in this season because faith obeys God instead of following man. He didn't have time to weigh the pros and the cons. They didn't have time to go on Facebook and say, should I do this, guys? Let me hear your feedback. Comment in the section below. They didn't even have time to pray. The plan was simply obedience. Obe I don't need to pray to be obedient to God. Amen. We used to have a wonderful hymn that says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. Think about how easy it could have been or, 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 or it would have been for them to rationalize a different plan. Because some of us, when we are put through the fire, amen, when we are put through a trying time, we rationalize how we shall handle the situation. They could easily say, we're going to fake it. You know, we're going to we're going to bow, but we're not going to really worship the idol. You know, we'll keep our fingers crossed, you know, and we're just going to hope that God did, doesn't see it. They could have rationalized that. They, they could have said, well, we'll just worship this one time and just ask God for forgiveness. You know, you know, I'll just drink this one time and I'll just ask God for I'll just folk this one time and I'll just act like I'll just sleep with this one time. And I no, 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 no. There's no time to rationalize. God will understand. Besides, if we die, who's going to help these people? We could easily rationalize. They could have easily rationalized the circumstance, rationalized whether, whether they're going to bow or stand. But let me tell you something. When you are committed to God, your heart is a heart that seeks to obey the master's voice. Satan will always give you Ample opportunities to compromise your commitment. Oh, my God. I'll say that again. Satan will always give you ample opportunities to compromise your commitment. He will give you opportunities to compromise your commitment. Come on now. There are times where God has given us things to do and Satan will always come in to bring distractions. Remember the job of the enemy is to still kill and to destroy. And so we have to be aware of Satan's schemes this morning. And when you're going through the fight of everything that Satan tried to do is to distract you and to discourage you and to cause you to go AWOL on your faith. To cause you to, to, to bail on your faith. But I'm challenging you in the spirit of God today. 
that you will stand firm, that you won't give up, that you won't throw in the towel. I'm thinking to the gatherer, you're a gatherer. Come on, you are an agent of grace. God has called you to stand strong even in the thick of it this morning. Hallelujah. I'll preach it to someone today. God has called you to be strong. And he's giving the strength that you need. But you have to obey. You have to obey. Faith obeys God instead of following man. That's the first quality of standing firm in faith. Faith obeys God instead of following man. My, my, the second quality I, I want to leave with you this morning, because they didn't bow, was faith believes in spite of what it sees. Ah, that's a tough one right there, I know. Let's chew on that for a minute. Faith believes in spite of what it sees. The book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 says, if we're thrown in the bird in, 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 in the blazing furnace, this is the three Hebrew boys speaking, the God who we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. I love that. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. You might be the king, but we serve the king of kings. Come on, somebody. So come sometimes you have to pitch your situation. In its proper place. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He has a name that's above every name. And you could name your circumstance. You could name your trouble. You could name your issue. Jesus Christ has a name above every name this morning. And we cannot forget the God that we serve. Faith believes in spite of what it sees. No matter what I see. My faith is telling me that God is able. And that was the heart of the three Hebrew boys. No matter what, no matter what you do, I, I, I know we're facing death right now. I know we're facing the, the, the fiery furnace right now. But King, we're not going to bow. We're not going to give up. Our God is able to deliver us from you, your majesty. And you have to know that God is more than able to do that what he said he's going to do. I don't care if you got a bad medical report. God is willing and able to heal. I don't care if you're in a broken relationship. God is willing and able to restore. I don't care if your, if your bank account is dangerous, dangerously low. God is willing and able to provide. And I don't care if you're facing COVID-19 or anything else that's going on. God is willing and able to protect. God would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or even think. Man, you know my story. My wife, Pastor Alvaro, and I, we, we, we tried to conceive to have children for years. For years we prayed. And there were so many words and prophetic words and, and, and things that were spoken over us for, 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 for many years. And we prayed. And we prayed. And we, and we sought God. Amen. And we went to the doctor. We did all the things that we knew to do. Amen. But you have to understand that God has a time and a season and a place for everything. My wife was pregnant in, 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 in 2016. Amen. And because and, and, and during that time, amen, people were giving us words and, and different things or whatever. And we thought, amen, that, you know, this was going to be it. And unfortunately, amen, we, 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 we lost our son. And I said, Lord, how? Are we going to get through this? Because you promised us this, but the very thing that you promised us seemed like it didn't happen. Oh God, we we left we 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 left broken, we left scarred, we left we left frustrated. What do we do in this time? What we do? What do we do in this moment? And the Holy Spirit began to speak. Do you still believe me? And they began to speak to my wife. One day, my wife was 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 coming home from work, and she saw a pregnant woman. The Holy Ghost said, "That's going to be you." And she said, "Lord, don't play with my emotions like that." He said, do you believe me? Because faith believes in spite of what I see. Faith believes in spite of what it sees. You might have suffered a loss in the last season, but do you still believe God? Do you still believe God? My God. Do you still believe him? Maybe the first time it didn't work the way you thought it was going to work. And I said, Lord, we're going to trust you. We're going to trust you. We're going to trust you. And the church began to pray. The saints began to pray. Because the Bible says, oh, the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And then again in 2018, my wife conceived again. 
Amen. And this time we said, Lord, we're just going to trust you because we're going to believe you. Was hospitalized, was put on bed rest. I didn't know what the outcome would be. We didn't know what the outcome believed. But we know that our God was more willing and we know that he was more able to do that what he said he was going to do. I don't care what the circumstance looks like. He was more willing and more able. And if he wanted to do what he said he was going to do, then we was going to trust his word. And sometimes you have to understand as you go through trials and, and tribulations and God puts you through these tests and allows you to go through these fires, it's for him to get the greater glory out of it. And for us, God was saying, Arthur, Alverna, are you going to trust me? The very things that you preach and teach and instill into others now is being put on the line. Are you going to trust me? You know I'm more than able. You, you, you declare it, you preach it, you, you sing it, you point it. But now are you going to live it on the next level? Because let me tell you, there's different levels to this thing. You, you, you can believe God on one level, but you believe God on the next. And that was our challenge. Well, we're going to believe God because faith believes in spite of what it sees. And at times it looked bleak. At times I said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But by faith, I said, okay, we're going to put this baby room together. By faith, I said, okay, we're going to get the stroller. By faith, I said, okay, we're going to buy the crib. By faith, I said, okay, we're going to decorate this nursery. By faith, I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to make the plans. We're going to do what we need to do. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. We were acting in faith. Faith believes in spite of what it sees. Let me tell you something. God came through for us. As you know, our, our daughter was born in 2019. She's now walking around almost 14 months old. And God gets the glory. God gets the praise. God gets the worship because he gets all of it because we dare to trust him and to believe. Our faith was tried. We were standing firm in the fire, but God brought us through. Let's continue to read. Faith obeys God instead of following man. Number two, faith believes in spite of what it sees. And here's the last thought this morning. Faithful obedience is our responsibility. The outcome is God's. Like I shared in 2016, we were expecting Amen. We were pregnant with our son, Ash at Maxwell. Amen. And we were believing God. Amen. We had, we, 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 we were praying. We were doing all the things that we knew to do. But some of them I asked this morning, but what if God doesn't do what I'm believing him to do? Let me tell you something. Faithful obedience is our responsibility, but the outcome belongs to God. I'll say that again. Faithful obedience is our responsibility, but the outcome belongs to God. God had a purpose for allowing Asher to come through. Amen. But we believe Asher's preparing the way for our daughter, Anique. I believe that in Jesus name. And God knows what we don't know. And he can handle what we can't handle. I don't know what we, we don't know the future, but he's out for the maker. He knows the future. And also he knows that even it, you have to understand that when you go through something, we talked about a trust that 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 is tried. That means that God is trusting you with this situation. I'm going to say that again. God can trust you with the situation. Why me? Why not you? God can trust you with the situation because he wants to get the glory out of it. You think the anointing and the glory of God comes in the midst of just living life carelessly? No, the anointing, the glory of God comes because there's been pressure applied. The anointing, we talk about the anointing, that the concept comes from olives being pressed and oil coming from the olive being pressed. When you buy olive oil, there's a version of olive oil called the cold pressed. The cold pressed is the olives being pressed. It's the first production of oil that comes from the olives. And so this morning... Some of you are being pressed, but that oil is coming out because he can trust you with the situation. He can trust you with the circumstance. He's going to, he, he can trust you with the issue that you're facing because he knows that you're going to believe him. He knows that you're going to stand firm in the fire. He knows that at the end of it, he's going to get the glory. We went through that circumstance. 
bury that son, but we said, God, you get the glory out of this. By, by God getting the glory, we've been able to minister to some, to, so many broken people who have suffered or have gone through what we've gone through or even worse. God would turn your story into a testimony. He would take the gory details of your life, the pain of your life, and he would turn it around. But even in the midst of it, he's challenging you to say, are you still going to trust me? Or are you just going to throw in the towel? Not today. Not on my watch today. I'm here to encourage you this morning. Trust God. But it's not working the way I thought it was supposed to work. Trust God. Trust God. Maybe it's God is moving outside of your box this morning. He just said, faithful obedience is our responsibility, but the outcome is God's. Our bishop came last year and preached for our 16th church anniversary. And he began to prophesy about the new wineskin, about the new new. And we all were shouted and excited because we was like, wow, new new. Didn't understand that the new new meant all these things that we were going through. We're going through a season. And let me just say this. It's a season. Just the way it started is just the way it's going to end. It is a season. But the thing is, you have to be anchored. There's a song we used to sing back in the day. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Is your soul anchored in the Lord? Is your faith grounded today? Are you standing firm in the fire today daniel 3 18 says but even if god doesn't do it these are the three hebrew boys speaking we want to make it clear to you your majesty see they always give the king respect your majesty that we will never serve your god or worship the golden statue you have set up in other words because we will do what's right before god and trust him with the results we're going to stand up to you and some of this morning, God has said, I want you to stand firm. I want you to stick, amen, to what, what, what he has spoken. I want you to stick to your morals. I want you to stick to your guns. Amen. Don't lose your edge in this season. Don't lose your stance in the spirit in this season. Stand firm in the name of Jesus. Stand firm. This infuriated the king when the Hebrew boy said this to him. And he ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than it normally would. Oh, yes, he did. It got so hot that the people who turned up the flame died. <laughs> it killed the soldiers because it got so hot. Okay? And then they threw the three Hebrew boys in the furnace. The Bible lets us know in Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished after they threw the Hebrew boys in the fire. And he rose with haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound, bound, tied up in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men, what? Loosed. Come on, somebody here today. Come on. Come on. You went in the fire bound. But baby, you're coming out loose this morning. Hallelujah. Because why? Because walking in the midst of the fire, they were not hurt. And the form is like the fourth. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. You have to understand that God is with you in the midst of the fire. And though you might feel like you're bound in the fire, God will loose you in your circumstance. He will loose you in the fire. He will loose you as you're standing firm. He will give you the freedom that you need. Oh, man, I wish I could preach it like I feel it this morning. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I feel bound up. Pastor, I feel tied up. But I'm here to encourage you this morning to stand firm. This is not the time to whimper. This is not the time to cry. This is the time to keep your head up and keep your shoulders square and watch God do exceedingly. Watch God do abundantly. Watch God do immeasurably. Watch God perform miracles on your behalf. Hallelujah. God reveals his power in many places, but you know his presence <laughs> Best in the fire. I'll say that again. God reveals his power in many places. But you'll know his presence best in the fire. 
He is standing with you. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And just the way he brought me and my wife through. And we have our bundle of joy. That's our testimony. That's our story. By God's grace, we'll be celebrating our 18th wedding anniversary. That's the story of God's faithfulness to us. God is making a story for you. What's your story? This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. What is your story? You only have a story when you stand through the test so he can give you a testimony. You go through the mess so he can give you a message. God is with you today. Hallelujah. Daniel 3, chapter 27 in the NIV Bible says, Then they saw the fire, they had not, and they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was their hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. In other words, they did not look like what they've been through. <laughs> they did not look like what they've been through. They went and bound, they came out free. If you were to say, man, like you've been through, I've been through the fight. like, you don't even smell like smoke. Because God is a keeper. He's with you. His presence is with you today. They didn't bend. They didn't bow. Because of God, he was with them. You have to know that God is with you today. And when you take that stand in your faith today, God will show up every time. We don't know how he's going to... I, I don't believe the Hebrew boys knew that God was going to deliver them like that. They just knew we wasn't going to bow because we know that this is not right. Because we're going to obey God and trust him. And give him the results. And the results was God came in. And he stepped right in the fire with them. And this is a scripture for us to take for us today. That even in the midst of this pandemic. Even in the midst of all that's happening around us. That God is still with you. God is still with the gathering church. And if you're part of the gathering church, that means God is still with you because he's no respecter of person. And what he do for the Shadwicks, he can do for you and you and you and you and you. Watch you type. God will do it for you. Oh, yes. Type God will do it for you. And then type it again. Say God will do it for me too. make it personal about yourself. Hey, neighbor, God will do it for me. He will come through for you in the nick of time. Just the way he came through for the three Hebrew boys, he will come through for you, my brother and my sister. Daniel chapter 3, verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar changed his tone. He said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's funny how people come to the show late. The same people that will give you grief, the same people that will give you heartache, the same people that were knuckleheads that were trying to block you, the same people that come and say, I knew it all along. Look at God. They come to the show late. But you know God gets the glory anyhow. You know God gets the praise anyhow. Now because this, Nebuchadnezzar continues to say, Who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own god. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. I pray that something I said today struck something in your heart. I pray that you don't leave this broadcast this morning, this worship experience this morning, in a place of despair. But I pray that you are strengthened today to know that as you continue to stand firm, and some of you, you haven't been standing firm, but God is saying today, get up. Girt gir gir yourself, gir girdle yourself, get, get up. Pull yourself up in faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Get back in the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Get back. Begin to read those prophecies. Begin to read what God has spoken to you in your own personal prayer time, what you wrote in your prayer journal. Begin to rehearse the scriptures in your heart to build your faith. Some of you might need to go on a media fast and stop watching everything else and just watch what God is doing in this hour. God is still performing miracles, brothers and sisters. While there are people who, 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 who have a mindset of nothing's happening, let's just cancel. I, 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 wrote, I, I saw something the other day, someone put on social media, let's just cancel 2020. I said, no, let's not cancel 2020. 
Because all things work together for the good. There is something good that's going to come out of this. God is going to get the glory in the midst of all that's happening. Don't get it twisted. Don't, you might not understand it, and I might not have the full scope of it, but I know the God that I serve. And the God that I serve will get the glory out of every circumstance and every situation. You have to know that this morning. You have to know that this morning. Your job is to have a faith to obey God and not follow man. I know we're going through this political season right now in our nation. And the nation, and our, it seems like our nation is divided. There's a great wall up. We call ourselves the United States of America, but I've been, I really feel like there's a division right now. We have to pray against that church. That's our responsibility. But our job is not to follow a man. A man is not going to rescue us. A man is not going to fix it. Not in flesh. We have to pray. We have to obey God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. A faith that believes in spite of what it sees. You might be seeing some 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 trouble right now, some situations right now that are outside of your control. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in God. Faithful obedience is our responsibility, but the outcome is God. Are you going to trust Him this morning, church? Are you going to trust what God has spoken? This is our word, this is our season, this is our moment to stand, to stand to be that true example of a child of God. Because he got you covered, baby. He's in the fire with you. And though you went and bound, he's going to loose you and set you free. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father in heaven, I bless you. I worship you, Lord. It is to you I give the glory. It is to you I give the praise. For you have done so much for me. And I will bless your holy name. It is to you, Holy Father. There is no one else like you. And we will bless your name forevermore. Father, I pray for those who are watching this morning. I pray for my fellow believers. My brothers and sisters in Christ. My family, God. And I pray that you would strengthen them this morning. God, as you gave me this word to share with them, to remind us to stand firm in the fire. Father, I pray this morning they will understand that their faith will be tested. But when it is tested, it can be trusted. Because if you brought us through 2018 and 2016 and 2019, you will bring us through 2020. Father God, I know that our plans and what we had in mind for this time, for this season, is very vastly different from what's actually happening before our eyes today. But even in the midst of this season, I'm asking you, oh God, to fortify my brothers and sisters today. I'm asking you, oh God, that you would renew their faith today. Father, I pray that something that I said this morning resonated in their hearts, Lord God, that Oh, God, they will go from a place of feeling defeated and feeling abandoned to know that God is with me. He is my ever-present help in these troubling times. And I'm going to trust him. I'm going to obey his word. I'm not going to allow myself to become discouraged. I'm going to get up. I'm not going to have a pity party. But I'm going to walk in the strength of the Lord. And I pray today that you will renew this strength like you do that of an eagle today. And cause them to soar. In this hour, soar and be all that you call them to be. If you believe that this morning, would you just type amen? As a matter of fact, why don't you just type some praises? Why don't you just type thank you, Jesus? Praise the Lord. I received that word. This word was for me. Yes, 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 yes. It was for you. It was for you. It was for you this morning. Hallelujah. Now, if you're watching this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are like the you 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 are like a person in the fire and the fourth man didn't show up because you need help. But God wants to be with you today. And he wants you to connect with him. 
The Bible says if you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. So if you want to connect with God this morning and make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you this opportunity to pray this prayer with me. There's nothing magical about the prayer. It's just a simple heartfelt prayer that as I, as, 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 as I say these words, repeat after me and just speak it from your heart. Because the Bible says that if we, amen, confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior from our mouth and believe in our heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. In other words, we will have a connection with that Heavenly Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes that that faith again, believes in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Pray with me right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Your word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. So right now, I give you my life and I ask that you would give me the strength to stand firm even in the midst of the fire because I know that you're with me for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just said that prayer with me, we believe that you got born again. And I want to officially welcome you to the family of God. That's right. Heaven is rejoicing. The Bible says if one soul gives their heart to the Lord, heaven is throwing a party right now because you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and said, because you gave your heart to God. Now, here's the thing. We don't want to love you and leave you this morning. I want to give you the resources and the tools to help you to grow in your walk with God. I believe the journey of, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step and you've made the first step in the right direction. And so we want to help you to continue to walk out your faith in God. If you were to click on the link right now, amen, you'll see the, 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 the link popping up. If you're watching on Facebook Live, if you're watching on our digital campus, you'll see I received Christ. Amen. You can click on that link. Amen. If you're watching on any of our other platforms this morning, you'll see the website address there. It's, it's the gatheringnj.org forward slash connect. And if you go to that link this morning, there's a digital connection card. That's how we connect with you. It's our connect card. And we want to connect with you this morning. We want to find some info. We want to get some information from you. And we want to send you information that will help you in your walk with God. Also, if you have a prayer request this morning or a private matter you want us to pray about or see how we can assist you this morning, why don't you just even also fill out that connection card today and we'll make sure to follow with you. Amen. We love you. We praise God for you. We thank you. And we, so, we are so excited, amen, that you made this commitment to follow God. And we want to see you continue to walk it out and continue to stand in firm in the midst of the fire. Amen. 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 Just want to give you just a few announcements before I get out your way this morning. I want to remind you that G-Kids is still on hiatus for our summer break, amen, for the month of August. Um, G Kids will start back up next month. Amen. We're looking to start G Kids back up on Sunday, September the 20th. Sunday, September the 20th. Amen. And that is the third Sunday of September. Why Sunday, September 20th? Because that normally is our Back to Church Sunday. It's the National Back to Church Sunday. Amen. With churches all over the United States, amen, celebrate and invite their family and their friends to come to church. Even though we're going through this COVID-19 experience, we can still digitally invite our family and friends to come to church. So Back to Church Sunday is still going to happen this year, brothers and sisters. Amen. And that will be on Sunday, September 20th. Amen. Right here online. Amen. At your gathering church. Amen. And we look forward to seeing you. And we want you to invite your family and your friends. Amen. In the, in the next week, we're going to um, give you a digital invitation that you can copy off our Facebook page. And you can share it on your personal Facebook page or any of your social media pages, Twitter, Instagram. Amen. You can even do a TikTok video, however you want to do it. Amen. And invite your family and friends to join us for our Back to Church Sunday happening on Sunday, September 20th. And that will also be the Sunday we would kick off our 4G kids. Amen, church. Amen. Praise God. I want to also remind you this Tuesday is our 6 a.m. morning prayer call. Amen. The logic credentials you'll see on the screen below. Amen. Just punch in the conference line number and the access code and join us for prayer every Tuesday at 6 a.m. We believe that a praying church is a powerful church. And let me tell you, in this hour, 
We need prayer and prayer increases and lifts our faith in God. It will continue to help you to stand firm in the fire. Also, um, we want to remind you um, that our online prayer gathering for September is going to be on Wednesday. Listen to the date, Wednesday, September 9th. Amen. At 7.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Remember, Thursdays, we're having our Bible study course right now. Thank you for those who signed up. Amen. The class is officially closed now. Amen. We'll be doing it again um, in, in, in the future. Amen. But we, we are filled to capacity and we're so grateful for those who are participating. But on our online prayer gathering and our communion time, it's going to be on Wednesday, September 9th at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Amen. You'll see graphics soon coming out for that. But I want you just to mark your calendars and stay today to join us on a Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m on Facebook Live for our Wednesday live prayer gathering. We had such a phenomenal time back in August this month. Amen. And I look forward to having a greater time even next month. So market counters Wednesday, September 9th at 7.30 p.m. Also remind you, your tithes and your offerings, amen. You can give online, amen. You can go to our website, thegatheringnj.org forward slash give. You can give via text messaging. That information will be on the screen. And even after service is over, you'll see the, the, the information pop up. Um, also, you can give via the Church Center app, amen. I've been encouraging each and every one to download our Church Center app. If you have an uh, 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 Android phone, you can um, download it on the Google Play Store. If you have an iPhone, you can go to the app store and just search for church center app. Amen. And you can download the church center app today. Once you download it, you search for the gathering church, of course, in New Jersey. Amen. You'll see our, our logo pop up and you connect with that. You will connect with our church and all the information that I'm talking about now will be right there. Our calendar, you can give, amen. Even our live feed now that you're seeing now is actually on our app right now streaming. So you can actually live stream from our church center app. Also, if you're part of a small group, a Bible study group, our men's group, our women's group, our youth ministry, we also have text messaging that goes through that app so you can stay up to date, amen. You can also up, update us what's going on so we can stay in contact with you. Amen. Guys, we're so excited today. We're, we're so blessed today. And I pray that you will continue to be encouraged in the Lord. The God is faithful. I'll say that again. God is faithful and he will see us through. This too shall pass. And I look forward to the day when we can come back together in a physical location and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But until then, be encouraged Know that God is standing with you and you continue to stand firm in the faith in Jesus name. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the honor and glory forever and ever. And let the gathering church type. Amen. God bless you. Be blessed.